Hi there. Welcome to Galavision. My name is Alexia Gonzalez, aka The Gala Life, and I'm your host of this brand new show that I've been dying to bring to you as a full-time content creator and TV host. I've always wanted to have my own show. People always ask me what my goal in life is with everything that I do, and I like to say to have my own morning show. So guess what? I'm bringing it to you. It's actually 6 p.m., but we're bringing you Galavision because I don't see any networks calling me for a show. So welcome to Galavision. Thank you for tuning in. I'm excited to talk about some of my favorite things, to interview amazing people, to talk about being a full-time solopreneur and business owner, and just to share more about my perspective and inspiring and empowering you as best as I can with my experience. And I'm also just kind of crazy, so I hope you have fun with me. What better way to enlighten one another than to connect? So as I mentioned, my name is Alexia Gonzalez and I live in St. Petersburg, Florida. We're in the Gala Life studio and I have a passion for storytelling. I've been a business owner and a full-time host, content creator, entrepreneur for the past two and a half years now. So I just like to create content and to share my perspective and to connect with other people because creating content has led me to some of the best relationships in my life. So I'm excited to connect with you and to get to know one another. Galavision is just storytelling worth celebrating and living every day like it's a gala, like a celebration, because every day should feel like a celebration, like a, a day worth celebrating regardless. And I named it The Gala Life, a little fun fact and backstory. I used to work at the Salvador Dali Museum, at the Dali Museum here in St. Pete. It was one of my first jobs upon moving to Tampa Bay and I handled the social media and digital marketing efforts and just fell in love and Salvador Dali has always been one of my favorite artists but his wife Gala, Gala Dali was the one who really inspired me as she was kind of like the business mind behind the artist so Gala just kind of you know came to me and my name Alexia Garcia is my uh, stepdad's last name and I don't know it just gala just felt right and then out of that St. Pete Gals has spun out and storytelling worth celebrating so it's just been organic and a brand that I love and I can't wait to continue growing and sharing with everybody so a little bit of me I got married in April here in St. Pete at the Vinoy Hotel to Mike Snyder my lovely husband he's right there and I own my own business, The Gala Group. It's an integrated communications agency where I do everything from contracting all of my work as a host and content creator to handling public relations, um, event planning, marketing, all types of communications for clients uh, from a range of industries like hospitality, fashion, lifestyle brands, just really, um, you know, a communications firm where we like to do storytelling worth celebrating. And I've been lucky enough to work with some incredible clients ranging from international travel brands to local female owned businesses here in Tampa Bay that really, you know, make a difference as well as nonprofit organizations. So I feel like I've been able to really experience such an amazing range of this community. And although I was born in Miami and moved here about five years ago, actually it's like six years ago now, I feel so passionate about Tampa Bay and St. Pete, more so than I, I really ever did about Miami. Like, love you Miami, always will. My family's there, it's my home. But there's just like a level of authenticity that exists here that I never found there. And the people and the creativity and just the level of superficiality is a little bit higher down there and I kind of grew up seeing that from an early age. and. I never really wanted out until I got out and thought, whoa, there's like a whole world outside of Miami because Miami feels like another country, sometimes far removed from the rest of the United States. So moving to Tampa Bay was pretty life changing. I don't ever see myself leaving and I hope to continue doing what I do here and working with amazing brands around this community. So let's get into some fun topics. I actually wanted to share what like a day in my life is like. Today was a crazy day in my life, but I still wanted to get this filmed. 
because I've been dying to put it out to the world and I knew if I just kept putting it off because I was tired or something it was never gonna happen so I woke up today at 5 a.m. and I was on the home shopping network at 9 a.m. for a live show actually I'm gonna see if I could pull it up okay so this feels like inception kind of <laughs> I'm wearing the same top okay I was so tired and sometimes when I'm that tired, it prevents me from getting nervous because regardless of how many times I've done this, I still get nervous every time of anything. I mean, I like with Home Shopping Network, I'm a lot more comfortable now, but oh God, I haven't watched this yet. <laughs> oh God, my, I'm so pale. I need to get a tan. I have it's so cold out. I like not going outside. Oh God, my nails look terrible. See, this is why I don't watch myself because I just like, I just cringe. I'm like, oh. Anyways, so I found out yesterday that I was doing this show. So I had to go to bed super early, which I didn't. Went to bed by like one, couldn't sleep. So um, my show was at nine, I had to be there at seven. Got up at five so that I could do my hair, my makeup, or at least the base. Cause I don't like to roll up to the studios bare face you never know who you could run into i often run into like a super famous person and usually when i look like crap today juliana rancic was right next to me and i really wanted to take a selfie with her but i didn't want to bother her but she looked amazing so i was happy that i had like a basic hair situation going on in my foundation and concealer but then so i get there two hours before my show and then i'll sit in the green room and do the rest of my hair and makeup and then my outfit and get ready and you know it's really fun it's live tv so it's the pressure's on i mean there's been there have been times in the past especially when i first started that like i've frozen and you blank out and there's multiple cameras there's a piece in my ear where they're telling me which camera to look in and like oh alexia show the bracelet oh keep going like keep talking people are buying it so it's really also based on the real-time reaction of the audience and the shopper which is exciting because if a product is doing well they're gonna keep it going and they're gonna be like keep talking about it so you have to sit there and like come up with talking points so i actually like really enjoy that because i taught public speaking in college at to pay my master's degree i was a public speaking ta i taught classes and i had a whole curriculum which was so fun to do but even I struggled with the speech aspect, like having to have the script memorized because that obviously is hard to memorize word for word. And then also it throws you off and makes you more nervous when you're thinking too much about talking points. So what I really like about the Home Shopping Network is that it's a conversation. You just have to look at it like a chat with your girl, which I think really is the way you should look at any formal presenting, like what I'm doing now. I mean, I feel like my window's open. There's people walking by who probably think I'm crazy. But guess what? I'm chatting with my girl, you, whoever you are. And that's what I think here. And that's what I try to do as well when I do shows that have scripts or, you know, more concrete talking points. I'm telling you, I just, I start sweating. My mouth goes dry. So I always have like water with me. I'm clutching water and lip balm so that I don't have like dry mouth. And when I get nervous, I just did it. I just did it now too. When I get nervous, I lick my lips. So I lick my lips. I used to say you know a lot and like, excuse me, I have to burp. So I learned that when I feel like I'm going to start using a verbal crutch, which is what you call that when you say words like, you know, like um, when you use a phrase or a word repeatedly as a crutch, you just have to recognize it. And then once you start to recognize it, you either like pinch yourself or you give yourself some kind of signal and you train yourself like, Oh, I know I'm going to say, um, I know I'm going to say like, and if you say a couple of times, it's okay. People want you to be authentic and organic, but just a little fun way to get better at public speaking. <laughs> so that was a fun morning. This whole desk just shook cause I kicked it by accident and, um, I did my show, got out of there about 10, 15, 10, 15. And then I went and grabbed um, coffee for a meeting at King State. It's a new coffee shop in St. Pete. That was my second coffee of the day. This is my third. It's actually from Pineapple Espresso, the cutest drive-through coffee shop literally down the street from me. 
So the only way I've gotten through today is excess caffeine. And my left eye was twitching vigorously because of it. And I Googled it and it was like stress, fatigue, lack of sleep, and excessive caffeine and alcohol intake. But I haven't been drinking. So I know it's the caffeine. Um, first two weeks of 2024. How are you feeling? How have you been? I know I've been feeling renewed, rejuvenated, inspired, like ready to do those things that I've been wanting to do. Hello. Hi. Hi, Galvision. Just like, you know, I'm turning 31 in February, February 15th, day after Valentine's Day. It's a really tough week for Mike. Uh, and I'm turning 31. I, I like how my voice went like lower. I was like, oh my God, 31. I don't want anyone to hear. 31. Even I can't believe it because in my mind, I'm 15. I'm like teetering 18. And that's that's tough. That's a tough space to be in. And so I got married last year. I already said that. But it's been like a crazy like year and a half. And um, apparently my Saturn was in return this past year. So that's supposed to mean like a full circle from birth, kind of the person you were working towards and putting into place is starting to manifest once your Saturn returns. So I, I feel truly like that's what has happened for me personally this past year, year and a half. I, you know, not only did I meet, not met, I, I met Mike 11 years, I met Mac 11 years ago. <laughs> Can't even talk. I met Mike 10 years ago. I met, I meant that I married the love of my life. I also feel like I finally let go of that imposter syndrome. I was actually DMing with a friend and we were talking about just like doing things that you want to do and letting go and how big imposter syndrome, how, how much of a part it plays in all of that. And that's really imposter syndrome. I don't know like the official definition, but it's basically when you like feel like you're an imposter or fake when you try to do something. So like if you're trying to be like an influencer or a content creator that you just like don't accept it or you can't move forward with it because you feel like you're phony. I'm not, I don't, I need to look up this definition. This doesn't feel like what I'm trying to say. Hey Siri, what does imposter syndrome mean? The persistent inability to believe that one's success is deserved or has been legitimately achieved as a result of one's own efforts or skills. Damn. <laughs> Still in there. Still got it. But no, it's it's basically like when you just like stop yourself from doing things because you don't feel like, you know, you have the ability to do it, which is exactly what I felt. And, you know, I'm going to be real. I have actually never have like said this publicly, but... My last job before I started the gala group, I was fired. And it's okay. Like, I can say that openly because I was fired by a very, very toxic boss and a toxic upper management and just a toxic agency. They really had it out for me. And I've always been very much an individual. They took me away from the Dolly Museum where I had an amazing job as their social media manager. And I was living my best life working at the Dolly just living in bliss, working in this amazing museum that I loved. And I got pulled by their PR agency. I got pulled by their agency to come and do their PR and be the director of public relations for this new agency. I thought, wow, what a role. You know, I miss PR. The Dolly was very social media focused. And I love all types of communications and media and and I, I never realized how hard it is for me to be boxed in until I started going out on my own. I worked prior to the Dolly at the Zimmerman Agency for about six years. After That's where I first started after college, after a few internships. And that's really where my career took off, where I learned everything about public relations, social media, events, influencer marketing, digital marketing. I traveled the world with the Zimmerman Agency. I opened dozens of hotels around the world. Did a bunch of press trips, met everybody, just had so many cool experiences. And through them, I got back on camera because I used to do a lot of acting and hosting and TV work when I was a teenager, like ages 12 to 16, 17, in Spanish in particularly. And then I kind of let that go to 
focus on school and, and go to Florida State University. But fast forward, I started my job at the Zimmerman Agency and really it was crazy, like such a learning experience, just like a crazy fast paced environment. Like, hey, you're getting on a plane tomorrow. You're going to Switzerland. You're going here. You're taking 20 journalists to the top of a mountain to have a meal and so that they could write about it. Like it was like that level. We got to work with so many amazing clients. I got to work closely with the Hard Rock International and Hard Rock Hotels. And um, yeah, it was an amazing place to be, but I learned so much. And I don't think I could be in the position that I am now as a business owner without that experience and without that training that I had. It really was like PR business owner boot camp for me. And shout out to the Zimmerman agency because I will forever love that place as much as I hated it when I worked there. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I moved to Miami. I left Tallahassee where the Zimmerman agency is located. I wanted to work remotely and I wanted to live in Miami so badly. I wanted to start my college, post-college life in Miami, the city where I grew up. It's so funny. I can't even describe how badly I wanted to live there. And my family was there. You know, I just wanted to, to start my life as a young woman in Miami, having grown up there and, and had a really full life in Miami up until college. So I went back home. I lived with my parents while I was working remotely for the Zimmerman Agency and had a few years long distance with Mike because we had met in college and really pushed on my career. And, you know, we moved to St. Pete, we moved to Tampa Bay and I kept that job and COVID hit. And thankfully I kept that job all through COVID. But during COVID is when I really had the opportunity to focus on the gala life, on the gala group. I mean, the startings of it, what would later become that, but really just yeah that was how it all began because I had the time and, and the resources and the ability to focus on what I loved to do instead of just always working for other clients and accounts and trying to keep up with that race so went to the Dolly left Zimmerman because I really wanted to try something new and social media and the Dolly and just a job in St. Pete with an iconic local institution just was so alluring and what I wanted I wanted to really establish myself here in St. Pete and to make a name for myself and I took a, a massive pay cut actually from the Zimmerman agency to work at the Dolly to be able to learn more about running social media and working at a museum and just doing something different and I'll never regret that experience because it was incredible and it was in office so I went from working remotely to working at the Dolly museum every day which, yeah, obviously going into an office isn't the greatest for everybody, but working at the Dolly was quite an experience to be able to wake up and go into the museum and see some of the greatest art around the world. I had access to their vault, which, I mean, I didn't have access to the vault, but they let me check out the art vault once in a while, which had like some of the rarest pieces in the world. So just what a cool job love the Dolly Museum and I will forever love the Dolly Museum and always visit it and always love to support as a content creator and a local and a lover of Salvador Dolly. But yeah, this PR agency called me at, you know, yeah, so this PR agency called me and said, hey, we like what you do. We see, you know, your background. Do you want to get back into PR? We have this really great title for you and this really fat paycheck. It was literally double what I was making at the Dolly. So what was I going to do? It was the hardest decision ever. It like killed me to leave the museum because I loved the entire team and the staff. It's just so many people that are passionate about the art. So, you know, it was really hard, but I left. I chased the money, which now looking back, don't chase the money. Chase what you love. Chase what you love to do. And again, the title was amazing too. It was a director where I was social media manager at the Dolly. So it was quite a, a shift and it was really shiny. So I grabbed it, started that job. It was miserable, miserable, miserable. These people were horrendous, horrible, had no regard for people's personal lives or didn't know what they were doing. Like they basically pulled me out of the Dolly to like run their PR department because the head of PR was leaving to another agency. And that lady was super sneaky to me. She was like grooming me to take her position. And then I don't think she liked the new job she got. So she like basically came up from under 
and took back the role. Yeah, it was crazy. So I was asked to to leave. I was let go. And I was asked for reasons why. I mean, I, I traveled for them. I worked my butt off. They seemed like they loved me. And then I went away for my best friend's wedding and I came back and they told me I was fired. So I can't tell you how devastating that was. I'd never been fired before. I was at the Zimmerman agency for six years and I climbed my way through that agency. And then I went to the Dolly where I willingly quit to go to this new place and they were horrible. And I can't tell you the pain and confusion that I felt that day, especially having left such an amazing job to take this new role that treated me like trash, like wouldn't even give me reasons, wouldn't talk to me. It was quite an experience to be treated with such disregard and then just like, bye, okay. Thank God for my husband, Mike Snyder, because he picked me up and he told me, you got this, don't worry, I'm here to support you. You do you. If there's something that you want to do instead of looking for a new job at another agency, then do it. And I'm here to help you. And that's what I did. I just gathered my resources. I established my LLC. I Googled everything, how to start your own business. And that's how I did it. And I did it all by myself. I started my LLC. You know, I oftentimes have people reach out and ask me, how did you, you know, what steps did you take? And I was really just Googling, just be resourceful. And there's so many tutorials and even resources and platforms that will do all the like filing and the dirty work for you. But yeah, take some time, get your banking, get everything in order. But I did it. I, I got the Gala Group up and running. And the first thing I did was reach out to everybody who had ever even like breathed my way. Like anyone who had anybody I worked with who had worked with me in some professional capacity, they got an email and I got some great responses. And through those responses is where two years later, I'm here as an agency owner and I am fully, fully self-employed and I get to work with clients that I love and feel passionate about. And you know, I've had some experiences like I'll talk about it in another episode, but a client that never paid me a spa here in St. Pete that the lady hired me to do her PR marketing. We have a signed contract, did not pay me at the end of the first month. We were supposed to work together for a minimum of six months to this day, hasn't paid me. So, you know, you learn, you live and you learn as frustrating as that is to me when I think about it, you just move on. So now I have a new policy. When I work with people, there's a deposit up front required. <laughs> But my point with all of this rambling is that that experience where I was told like, peace, I thought I was this big. Like I thought I was dirt on the ground. I thought my life was over. And I just took a chance on myself and I put myself out there, really just stuck to like how I feel inside authentically and the things that I wanna do. And that's really the only way I can describe it. And that's what I put out into the world. And I think ever since I've started doing that is when the universe has come back and brought me opportunities and connections and incredible things. And I think that's what you do when you open yourself up to the universe, it's gonna open right back to you. So I'm incredibly thankful to have been fired by that. <laughs> I feel like I, I was trying to like mouth that, but I actually said it. I'm so glad I was fired from that terribly grotesque agency because I was pushed out of my comfort zone to do something so scary because I did not have another option and it was the best decision I've ever made in my life the best thing I've ever done for myself and I would never go back so 2024 I'm gonna focus more on turning negative opportunities into negative situations into positive opportunities because you never know I forgot how that was the first two weeks of 2024, but first two weeks of 2024, how are we doing? Going to focus more on my business, going to focus more on my health and wellness because that's something I tend to kind of like disregard when I'm super into work and business. Like I just wake up and go straight to my computer or like today when I had to be up at 
five I had to be somewhere at 7 a.m. with full hair and makeup the last thing I want to do is work out before that so that's an area I'm struggling in it's like consistency with my exercise and my healthy eating and being better about that because I in the past have been really good and I know what to do but I'm just really struggling with consistency and wellness in the new year dovetails right into that I'm also trying to get more into these like sleepy girl mocktails that I'm seeing and just mocktails in general I mean I love a good cocktail and champagne but I'm loving adapting mocktails more into my routine so maybe next gala vision episode we'll talk about some of our favorite mocktails in Tampa Bay but sticking to the wellness in the new year just wanted to give you a self-love reminder it's okay if you still haven't figured it out it's okay I'm 30 (laughs) if I didn't already tell you that I'm turning 31 I I feel like I'm now finally figuring myself out and I'm now really living out the person that I want to be. And that's 30. So, you know, like my cousin, she's starting college right now or she's applying to schools. I wish I could give her all of this knowledge, all of these 10 years. Well, she's 18. So like 12 years, all of my tribulations and all the shit that I went through and just put it in her beautiful little just like amazing brain and like it's okay you don't have to have it all figured out now but just do you boo that's the biggest thing I think especially when we were like 10 years back I don't know I feel like 20 year olds now versus 20 year olds 10 years like 10 years ago obviously social media digital landscape is completely different and allows for so much more opportunity and the ability to like be your own boss when I was starting out being your own boss was like, what? Especially for a marketing agency, it was like very far or few in between that you would see like a, um, an uh, agency owned by an entrepreneur or solopreneur or a social media management firm. It was, you were like at an agency or corporate or there was the few that had their own business. But now it's, there's so much room and so many possibilities. There's so much room for everybody. There always has been. But now it's the possibilities are truly endless, and I wish these youths would understand that. I'm really showing my age here. Okay, you don't have to explain everything to anyone, or you don't have to explain anything to anybody. And again, in this new year, this new decade of my life, I'm trying to set more boundaries. And I'm one of these kinds of people. I'm so sorry to all my friends. I really suck at this, but. I'm, I'm, I'm an extroverted introvert. That's what I like to say. So I can be the most outgoing, the most extroverted. Like clearly I'm filming myself right now talking because I love it, but I get really like socially drained easily. So, and I recharge by myself. I have to be alone. And even I like push Mike away. Like I just have to be by myself in order to have that energy to then put it back out. So oftentimes I have to set boundaries with friends and just say no to things and I end up feeling so guilty about it. But in the long run, I know I'm going to feel better about myself if I'm able to conserve my energy If instead of like doing something that I just feel like I have to do to make someone happy. So again, you don't have to explain yourself. If you're not feeling something like, hey, I'm so sorry, I just can't tonight. Or, But don't be shitty about it. Like don't flake on people, don't ignore people just set healthy boundaries i'm also like you know working on my phone all day talking to people all day and stuff for work like sometimes the last thing i want to do on my time off is talk to people and be on my phone so i just wish you know friends would understand that understand that and i hope they do and I, i know most of my friends do so you don't have to explain everything to everyone set some healthy boundaries and not every day is a good day it's okay to feel sad embrace those moments because that's how the rainbows come. What, what's the Leonard Cohen quote? I'm trying to remember. There's a crack. Oh, the only way the light c- can come in is through the crack. So it's okay. You can have some bad days. And even me, like, I know I have to be active on social media. So <laughs> I'll, like, be huddled up on the couch, like, super emo. And then I'm posting a throwback of 
a hotel stay or something and I get people texting me like, hey, are you at this hotel? I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> Send a selfie and I just have like a blanket over my head. So yeah, every day is not going to be a good day, but every day is a gala day. So make sure to gallivant and explore and put yourself out there and don't be afraid to celebrate every day, even if it's not a great day because you're here and you're living and that's really what's worth celebrating. So thank you for tuning in. That was really fun. I hope you enjoyed it and I can't wait to chat with someone and not just chat at you the entire time. So I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you for tuning in to Gala Vision. Make sure to follow me at The Gala Life on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Pinterest, everywhere. I'm Alexia and I'm the creator of The Gala Life, a digital lifestyle platform designed to share all of the best of what to do, where to play, local culture, and hidden gems in our Tampa Bay community. I'm also the founder of St. Pete Gals, which is a network of local female entrepreneurs and creators who seek to empower and inspire one another.